everyone, I'm Brittany Jones Cooper and welcome back to Build. 2019 was a big year for our next guest. In addition to being named on the Forbes 30 Under 30 list, Marseille Martin became the youngest executive producer ever in Hollywood. Martin is, of course, best known as the smart and tough Diane Johnson on ABC's Blackish, and she's here to talk about an upcoming episode focused on black women's hair. Marseille Martin! <laughs> You also can't go outside in the rain. You can't open the dishwasher and let steam hit that hair. Yeah, it's a very no. limiting experience for a yes. black woman when it comes to moisture. Um, so I love that clip. The whole we'll talk about the whole hair, hair episode, but that clip is a Eddie Murphy sketch from SNL from back yes. in the day. Too hot for the hot tub. Were you familiar with that before they asked you to take on that role? You know what? I kind of was, but not really. I was like, okay, so what is that? Like, from, what is it about? Um, my mom definitely knew. So, like, same thing with the Prince episode when I was Prince. It was kind of like the same route. Yeah. So I just watched it, like, at least, like, once or twice, and then I got, I got the vibe. That's what I love about this show is it is constantly introducing audiences to new experiences that maybe they weren't familiar with, like Eddie Murphy on SNL, which was iconic. Yes. It was so much fun doing it, too. Yeah. I, I literally wanted to get in the hot tub. Oh, but you can't. It'll make you sweat. Too hot for that. To sweat. <laughs> <laughs> so this uh, episode is called Hair Day. That's mm -hmm. coming up uh, tomorrow, right? Uh, yes. And uh, tell us what the episode is about. Well, uh, as you saw in the little clips, it's um, kind of like a story for Diane. It's something that we've always wanted to talk about as like a crew and a cast, but we didn't really know how to perceive it. But now that Diane is a little bit or oh, sorry, <laughs> a little bit older, now we can uh, kind of transform it in a different route and have it in a different perspective. So this uh, episode is about Diane's journey like on her hair journey basically. So Diane's been getting a relaxer in her hair because that's kind of like the easiest way to go for her. Of course with school and all that, that's kind of the start for everything. And then all of a sudden she just really didn't want to do it anymore. So it's kind of her experiencing new things and having her mom along it too. And it's called hair day because for black women, it, that's how long it takes to get your hair done. Yeah, <laughs> it, it takes forever. It takes <laughs> all day. Which right. I think a lot of people don't understand, like when a black woman goes to the salon, or even if she has her home routine, it's going to take four, five, six hours. Yeah, I mean, it really depends, honestly. But you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. So. Um, and so I love, t t take me through the, the behind the scenes conversations about this episode, because you said it's one that you guys have been thinking about and trying to do it right. So yeah. why did this feel like the right time other than just her age, like the topic? Why did they want to explore that? I mean, just having two dozen black women in our cast, crew, writing, like creating a, a part of like the whole experience for the past six years. We've always wanted to talk about something that is like for us, by us. So just to have a great experience and to actually have people that actually work with us be influenced in the episode and being in the episode is pretty cool. And um, I mean, it was very strategic. Yeah. It was very like, read the script, let's read it again, let's read it again, right. see what we want to change. And definitely I talked to Tracy, then we talked to Courtney, which is the uh, showrunner, and then Marquita Robinson, shout out to you, which is a writer. And we just kind of fleshed everything out that we want. So it doesn't feel like we are telling one side. And you mentioned the other women on the staff, and you do include them. There's little testimonies from each person. Right. And I forget who it is in the, in the staff, but she says, you're going to tell this in 22 minutes? Yes, that's actually <laughs> Heidi. Um, she's, she's the best. I love her. Like, every time I see her, it's always, like, a different hairstyle. She's kind of like, kind of like me. So yeah. <laughs> it works. But it's, it was so cool to have those different perspectives because I think what this uh, episode shows so expertly is that the black hair experience is so different from woman to woman. Mm -hmm. And um, that path on your hair journey is very personal. And I think a lot of people like to criticize women for how they wear their hair, but sort of the message is women should have the, the pride to wear it however they want to wear it. Right, of course. And that's really what this is about. Like, it does. It depends on your mood or however you feel. It's your hair and you can do whatever you want with it. Like. You're supposed to, like, that's supposed to be, like, an open door for you to feel comfortable and feel good about yourself. So that's what I do with my hair. So. And to express yourself and yeah, sometimes express just to yourself. protect your hair. Yeah. Um, I know for you, you're in Hollywood. You're on different sets. People want to put heat on your hair. They want to do different things. What has your journey like been like as a young black woman just trying to protect your hair in this industry? Because I know it can be difficult. Yeah, I mean, it's been uh, difficult in, like, the beginning just to really find um, myself, really. Like, because I love any hairstyle, like, in general. Like, I like my hair straight. 
straightened that like my hair and like braids like this. But really just, uh, it just really depends on my mood. But in the start of the of the show, I had like my hair in like buns and like little little bobble heads. What's that thing called? Little dangly bobbles? Oh yeah, I don't. I call them dangly bobbles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. something like that. We I I had them as like a little little yeah, baby too. We all did. Yeah, but me and Aroxy, um, my hairstylist on the show, and also the head hairstylist of the whole show, she actually just has. Like has an adventure of her, her own, so we kind of just talk about it together, you know. And then the more we grow, the more like Diane's like fourteen, thirteen now, we can just express ourselves with the styles and stuff. So I felt comfortable in myself, and me and Diane actually have the same journey as well. So it's That's cool. so important that you have somebody though in the crew that takes it as seriously as you do. Just right. I've heard of experiences for Black women in Hollywood. It can be very hard when you come onto a set sometimes if people don't quite understand your hair or what they can do with it or what they can't do with it. Yes, I've been through that before. I'm right. like, that's not what you do. Right. You need this, you need that. Yeah, we've been through it before, for sure. Uh, you Also, I can't forget to mention, Jill Scott is in this episode. Yes. So what was is. it like working with her and just getting to watch her work? I love her. <laughs> Uh, I feel like we were like all freaking out when we found out she was gonna be on the show, and then next thing you know, she's like making a song for the show. I was like, okay. Oh, did she write that song? <laughs> yes, she did, and it was super amazing. It was so fun to watch, especially when you're just standing there watching other people work. It's pretty amazing. Um, yeah, just seeing her craft and how she works in person is amazing. And I've been watching Jill Scott for a long, long time. So she's just super sweet. She's like a honorary auntie. Yeah. So I love her. She can do everything. I was just watching First Wives Club, and I was like, she can sing, yeah. she can act, she can do, just do it all. She can do it all, I which is great. Her. Jilly from Philly. <laughs> so uh, Diane is one of my most beloved characters on TV. I think, for me, I just identified with her a lot, you know, like I did with Ru Rudy on the, the Cosby show. Mm -hmm. um, but you've been playing her since 2014? Yeah, 2014. That is crazy. So what uh, still keeps her interesting to you, or what do you look forward to still exploring with Diane? Ooh, I mean so much. She's in the space of a teenager, you know? She's always, uh, she's always been her true self, which I love, and I can express myself in her. So whatever uh, she's thinking about or whatever she's feeling, it's coming out of my, my head. And I mean, it's always amazing and always something new too that I can play with, like whether it's like a new boyfriend or like someone at her school or any of that. Um, she's kind of going through like the same experiences as a regular teenager does. So I love that about her too. Mm -hmm. And I always see you on your social media, listening to music, your clothes. You're very expressive through art, I find. Thanks. And so do, does any of that slip into Diane? Do you ever go in and ask them to add things that you oh, really love? Yes, for sure. Like <laughs> yes. what? what are some examples? Oh, um, I, I think definitely like, I don't know, not like necessarily baggy clothes, but more like like hippie, not hippie either. What is the... Like 70s inspired? Not even 70s, but kind of just like a... 90s? So type vibe, you know? <laughs> Yeah, I, know. I don't even I know, know what that I mean. Vibe. No. Yeah, like you do know <laughs> like, that. Vibe? I'm thinking it's like more... kind of the loose like '90s jeans that are yeah. back, like that vibe. More loose, more um, ooh, more like cool, fresh, trendy type vibes. Cause uh, that's what I'm really into right now. So whatever I can put in as much as I can to Diane's character, I'll try. What is it that you love so much about fashion? Was it something just that you've learned to love because it's part of the job, or do you really kind of love the expression that comes from? Um, it, it's a mix of both. Um, it's kind of the same thing as my hair. It really depends on how I'm feeling. And, uh, like, I really don't have, like, a certain style to me. But, um, but yeah, it just really depends. And, of course, in the industry that I'm in, you always see, like, people with really dope outfits and super cool. So I've always wanted to just be one of those fashionistas. Like, I've always been one of those people that love, like, red carpets and, like, um, like walking down the runways and stuff. So the fact that I get to really see it for myself as at an older age, it's kind of talking to like my younger self, like, girl, you did that, you did yeah, that. You really, and you do it well. Thank Sometimes you. I'm looking at your Instagram, like you wore this all camel outfit the other day and I was like, I would wear that like a hundred times. Oh yeah, I, I think you were in GMA. Yeah, and I was yeah, like, I was at GMA. You it was managed like a to look outfit. like grown, but also still fifteen. Like it's a, it's a balancing act. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, and everyone has opinions about it, but it's okay. Who cares? <laughs> right, right. We just gonna make it through. My you know, parents know. If they have any issues, just tell them to go look at your first look deal uh, that you have. At the oh Universal. my god! I feel like that's a nice like. They got any problems? You like? I'm working. Okay. <laughs> 
Um, so okay. you got that first look deal last year, which is such a big deal. Yeah. Um, what have you learned about the industry now that you've really moved into this producing space and that that's a, an area it looks like you're really passionate about growing in? Yes. I mean, I learned so much, especially what like being an executive producer is and just being a full time creator. Um, it's been it's been a lot, but it's been a fun ride. And I'm glad I get to know it at this age. So when I grow up. I don't have, really have to worry about it as much. So um, I'm blessed and grateful for like the the life that I have and what God's plan was for me. But just just the fact that I get to grow every day and see like, oh, here's like the actress level, and now here's what an EP looks like, and here's what being a full time creator looks like, and an entrepreneur. Like I'm just learning uh, just one step at a time, you know. So it's it's great. I love it. Are there any people in the space um, that you look to as mentors who, or who have given you a really piece of sage advice as you've moved into the creating and producing space? Um, I mean, there's so many things that people have said to me. I feel like my parents give me like everyday advice all the time, especially for the industry. But what I get advice from like other people is seeing them work and how their craft is. Like, ooh, let me not do that next time. Or, oh, that... that that's good to know. So I really get, uh, I really like to witness like things. I really am one of those people that kind of like to stay quiet at times and really just witness everything that's around me and see what I can move along with forward. That makes sense. So you a quiet observant. Yeah. You know that you're I always like paying attention. That. Yeah, I like to say that, but I don't know if I'm like just a chatterbox, but I'm not all the way sure, but we'll see. You're clearly observing all the right things because things are going pretty well. Yeah. Um, I know you're working on now three different films. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one is Step Monster. Um, that, that, I mean, that I've heard about. I know. Yes, there's Step Monster, Queen, and Amari and the Night Brothers. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what we're shooting first, but I know they're all going to be like almost finished by. Yeah. You're producing all three. Are you starring in all three? Um, yes, I am. Yes. <laughs> Casually. Yes, yes. I, I had to think about that. Yeah, I think so. And Queen was the one I just read about most recently. It's a comedy. Yes, it's a comedy. So that's fun. Yes, I can't talk a lot about it, but just know that I, I'm I'm excited for Africa. I, like, I want to go to Africa. So I want to create a film that shows like the royalty and love that black culture has. So... Have you yeah. been seeing everybody out at Afrochella and the return to Ghana? Have you seen no. all that stuff? What? Uh, it was like at the end of the year, Afrochella, which is like Coachella, but for like yeah, it makes sense. I yeah. just haven't seen it. Uh, and That's then like all these like black celebrities went out there, and there's like the return to Ghana year where they're like everybody come back to Ghana. Dang, yeah, you, mi you missed that? Come on, you gotta go. I uh, maybe I. Mm. I don't know. We'll go next year. I <laughs> yes. think they're going to keep the at least Afrochella thing going. Like, right, right, right. It looks amazing. Uh, do you, you know where you're going to shoot in Africa yet? Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure just yet. But I know we want to be in that space that looks more of royalty and what um, the true black culture is. Yeah, it's a, it's a beautiful continent. Like, yes. There's so many beautiful countries to shoot in. I've never been before. Oh. That's why I'm excited. Oh. Yeah. I have been a few times, and it is always a trip. That you're going to have a beautiful film. Okay. Like if that's where you're shooting, you'll be good. Yeah, I'm um, excited. So it seems like 2019 was a big year. 2020, moving 2020. forward. 2020. Did you make any resolutions? You know what? I did. Um, I Every day, or not every day, every year, I actually record myself, me and my friends, and pick three resolutions. And last year, or last last year, I didn't make that happen. I made two of them happen, but I didn't make one happen, which is exercising as much. I don't know. But it's um, tough. It's, tough. it's hard. You got a schedule. I don't know. I'm, no, I'm okay. But <laughs> with uh, these three, let me think. Uh, it was not splurging too much on stuff that I don't need because I'm a Leo and I like to splurge on expensive things and that's not okay. So um, not splurging on as much things. Uh, also just working on my mental health yeah. and always uh, making time for myself because it can get a lot of pressure sometimes and just, you know, making sure your mind is right is always good for me. So making sure that's well. And then what was the other one? Oh, eating better. I'm trying to think if I want to go vegan or not. Is anybody in the audience vegan? Anyone? There's a reason ha, no nobody one. raised their <laughs> hand. A part-time, that's what I thought. Like, just trying, like, I live in L.A., so there's so many places. Yeah, there's so this many diet options. diet called Vegan Before Six, where basically you eat vegan all day, and then for dinner, you can have what you want. 
So oh. it's like fake veganism. But <laughs> yeah, I don't think I can fully do it because like I like too I, I like too much stuff. Yeah, those yeah. are good resolutions. I and I love hearing from you because you know we only we only see this amazing, you know, professional woman. But I love that all of your resolutions were really about t- taking care of Marseille. Yeah, and making sure that like at your age that you're feeling good and vibrant. I love that that's important to you. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's always about taking care of yourself before. Making sure others are good. Yeah. God, and the sooner you learn that, the better. So good on you. Right. Um, Thank you. We do have some questions from the audience. Who has our first one? Right here. Hey. Hey. So congratulations on all your two, 2019 success. Thank you. Um, it's clear that you don't put a um, you don't let your age put a limitation on what you can do. So what would be some advice you would give to someone who thinks they're too young, or even someone who thinks they're too old to start following their dreams? Um, I, I say that's not the case. I feel like you can do whatever you want at any age or at any time. I feel like it start, it all starts with you, you know, there's, I don't, I don't think there's no such thing as being too late on anything, you know, cause this is your life. Life is short. So do what you want to do when you, when you have the time that you have, whether it's starting small, going into something big or already having the platform, whatever platform you have, just keep moving forward with it. There's no time being wasted. Thank you. Of course. And would you agree that especially now is the time? I mean, there's so many platforms. There's so many websites. There's so many different avenues to success, whereas, you know, I think maybe 10, 20 years ago, mm-hmm. things were just different. Well, I feel like... I, people say now is the time because there's more people doing it this yeah. time. Like there's more. Like I feel like when other people do things, it's like, oh, okay, I can do that. Or, and then it's like whole layer on. So now it's like, oh yes, now is the time to do it. But I feel like there's been so many years where we can do it. It's just um, who's gonna pull the trigger type thing. So um, yeah, I, I think it's kind of like a good balance between yeah. But now moving forward, people really see that it can happen and witness it for themselves. And you've been, I think, one of the shining examples for that, for young women, but I think specifically for young black women and black women in their 30s. I just, oh, thank yeah, you. I just, I'm like, yeah, man, I could do it. She did it. I could do my own, whatever my thing is. Thank I you. I think you continue to inspire people, so I keep that up. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. And one more? One more? Over here. Congratulations on your success. Thank you. You're very talented, and I really loved you in Little. Thanks. Do you have more plans on doing solo projects on TV and movies? Uh, yes, for sure. I have a whole bunch of projects. I have a whole bunch of projects. <laughs> it's crazy, but um, but this is kind of like a creative box up here. And of course, I have it with my family. My production company's with my family, so we always are um, thinking of amazing ideas, whether it's for me or not for me, just probably expressing myself in directing or writing someday. So um, definitely more solo projects in the future. Yeah. Your production company is called Genius Production? Yes, Genius. So how did you guys come up with that name? Um, I think, I honestly don't remember. <laughs> I think it was dad's idea. But then I was like, oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, because I think we saw the logo first. And then we were like, oh, this kind of matches with it. I'm not all the way sure. They're backstage. Hey, let me know after, because I don't know. But, um, but yeah, I think that's really how that happened. But I've always liked the name Genius. Dad likes the name Genius. My mommy does, too. So um, it was kind of like a collaborative effort. Effort? Effort. Yeah. Effort. Effort. That's okay. I can barely talk to that. Yeah, I have an Invisalign on. So it oh, kinda you is... actually wear yours. I don't. <laughs> oh, for the longest time, I couldn't wear it, because like, I started mine when I was like 10. Yeah. And then, of course, when you give a 10-year-old, like, an Invisalign, it just don't work out, you know? So I just ate with it. I threw it in the trash multiple times. My dentist was so mad at me. I was like, okay, I'm sorry. But, but the fact that you good. can be here in full conversation, and I didn't know, because I do wear mine, but not during my interviews, because the whole time I'm talking like this. Oh, yeah, I have really to practice. practice. Yeah, I really have to practice. Sometimes it kind of slips me up the more I think about it, so I just have to pop out this bottom one, but... We're good. That's why you just continue to level up. You can overcome your Invisalign. You can overcome anything. Yes. <laughs> Power to it. Yes. Well, it was so great chatting with you. Thank you so um, much for having this me. This episode coming up tomorrow, I really hope that people check out. I think it'll be an education for a lot of people, and I think it will actually help a lot of black women feel seen for the first time like this on network TV, which I just really haven't seen an episode like that. So Thank you. congrats on that. You Thank guys you can so check much, it out guys. tomorrow on ABC and put your hands together for Marseille Martin. Thank you.